Hi guys. Imagine that. It is another gray, gloomy, hot, sticky day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization where we have somehow stumbled into Friday, July 16, 2021. And, uh, so Friday, of course, time to do my ecological meltdown roundup rant where I go over to mongabay.com for uh, our weekly laundry list of assaults against this planet for my weekly ecological meltdown roundup rant. But my God, guys, I have to admit the mainstream media today is a better chronicler of the collapse of the planet than Mongabay. The first six stories on Manga Bay are this hopium-soaked, apocalyptic crap. I should probably just forego. Uh, I don't know what has gotten into Rhett Butler's head. I don't know if he's just trying to raise more money because people don't, e even readers of Manga Bay apparently don't want to hear it anymore. Uh, good lord, I could just go down the mainstream media and, and just skip the Manga Bay rant. Good lord, There's f we got floods, we got wildfires, we got massive fish kills in St. Petersburg. <clears throat> they have bulldozed 614 tons, 614 tons of dead fish off of St. Petersburg Beach uh, this week down there in Florida. Of course, no mention of that giant phosphate mine, phosphate mine spill they had a uh, few months ago having any connection uh, to the big, I guess this is the single uh, most hellacious red tide event down there in Florida history. Uh, just think of a, a th if a hurricane slams into a red tide. Anyway, uh, and many versions already on the mainstream media, and of course, Manga Bay, the, uh, <clears throat> I noticed Common Dreams this morning, Common Dreams, calling this story right here the biggest story on the planet and uh, you can decide for yourself of course Manga Bay has been saying this for years now but I guess it is official Brazil's Amazon is now you know officially a carbon source unprecedented study reveals <clears throat> According to the study published July 14th in Nature, the Brazilian Amazon rainforest is now emitting more carbon than it captures. The study is the first to use direct atmospheric measurements across a wide geographic region collected over nearly a decade that account for background concentrations of atmospheric gases. The eastern Amazon is emitting more carbon than the western Amazon at this point anyway. And southern uh, Amazonia is a net carbon source. Uh, southeastern Amazonia in particular switched from being a carbon sink to a carbon source during the study period. The reason a disruption in the balance of growth and decay and emissions from fires. There you go. Um, it is official. The you know the Amazon rainforest. I remember uh, back in high school. Uh, you know talk learning about this concept uh, about you know how the Amazon rainforest is one of the main ways uh, it, well a, a carbon sink uh, anyway guys the Amazon rainforest the biggest carbon sink on the planet is now emitting carbon not soaking it up uh, 
Biggest story on the planet or not, you decide. <clears throat> you will not believe this, guys. Once again, Rhett Butler has come to the rescue explaining this to me because I never would have known this without Rhett letting me know. <clears throat> a road project, huh? A road project in Indonesia carves a path of graft and grief. More than 1,000 families were entitled to payments for land needed to construct the Garantalo Outer Ring Road. Yes, a national priority infrastructure project. Yes. The road will connect the airport to a seaport. Uh, so far, a senior provincial official and two surveyors have been jailed in connection with corruption in the land acquisition process. Another one on trial. Do you think so? Uh, okay. Would you believe this, guys? This is drawing the dots between the banksters behind it all, the collapse of the Amazon rainforest, and oil drilling. All right. Here is how you connect dots in the hemisphere. A new report by Amazon Watch and Stand Earth finds that most banks, most banks have failed to implement policies that would prevent the worst impacts of the oil industry and the Amazon. Hmm. Of 14 banks that they looked at, you know, uh, assigned a score in the report, 11 were listed at being at high or very high risk of contributing to deforestation, corruption, pollution, and the violation of indigenous rights. Yes. The report's authors say a blanket exclusion, a blanket exclusion for any oil-related activities in the Amazon rainforest is the only way to ensure its protection. Yes, I am sure um, that's going to happen. Anybody who does not understand the concept of the banksters behind it all without these giant banks funding this stuff, uh, this planet eating, who do you think is literally bankrolling uh, these projects? These projects uh, would, would fold overnight. All right, here, here's a real knee slapper. Building back Miami's Biscayne Bay. Uh, a massive fish kill last summer was a red flag that already historically troubled Biscayne Bay in Miami has passed a biodiversity health tipping point. Yes. Uh, scientists and citizens are now focusing their efforts on creative ways to restore biodiversity in Biscayne Bay, I, I bet that will be the definition of being creative, trying to uh, restore an open sewer. Uh, Biscayne Bay, and uh, I remember when I was a kid, good Lord, a hundred years ago, going uh, sailing around in this little six-foot sunfish sailboat with my uncle in Biscayne Bay. So we're, good Lord, uh, you know, we're talking over 50 years ago now. Good Lord, over 50 years ago, just the unbelievable amount of, uh, you know, the, the flying fish. I, th those were very flying fish, the dolphins, 
you know, we dive out of the boat and we would catch these uh, big old puffer fish, you know, that you would catch and they would blow up all of the, uh, you know, all of the seashells. Good God, I can imagine uh, what a child going sailing in Biscayne Bay would find there today. Uh, all right. Wow, another uh, shocking headline. Global demand for manganese, for manganese puts Kayapo Indi indigenous land under pressure. Yes. Uh, talking about an unusual rise in demand to mine for manganese last year in Brazil. Uh, previously, only 1% of mining bids on indigenous lands were for manganese, uh, but by last year, up to 15% where manganese mining is now second only to gold. Uh, and you will not take a wild guess where some of the richest manganese deposits in the world are located. How about in the Brazilian Amazon? Yes. Demand for manganese from Asia, particularly China, has increased the price of manganese, driving illegal mining 300 thousand tons of the ore overseas last year in Brazil. Um, there you go. In manganese, isn't that aluminum? What they make aluminum out of? Good Lord. Okay. We have a worse than previously thought headline. I don't know if this is the only worse than previously thought headline, but it will be, it will be the one for right now. The Philippines Rich bird life is more threatened than we thought. Hmm. The Philist the Philistines, there you go. The Philistines. The Philippines supports extraordinary avian diversity. Eighty-six new endemic bird species have been described in the country in just the last decade. Nevertheless, the country's currently known five hundred 94 bird species depend on forest, grasslands, and wetlands, all of which are rapidly disappearing. This songbird is uh, joining in this rant. <clears throat> A new study suggests that even more species of bird are at risk than previously thought. Hmm finding 84 species are at greater risk than indicated by their official IUCN red list status. Yes. Do you think so? All right, let's see. Do I have time to talk about ecological collaboration. Uh, anyway, oh, that's Bill Lawrence. I interviewed Bill last year, but anyway, we're going to skip over your, your article. All right. You will not believe this. Top brands. Top brands. There you go. That That's really a tells us a lot, are failing to spot rights abuses, abuses on Indonesian oil palm plantations. Yes, a new report highlights systemic social and environmental problems that continue to plague the Indonesian palm oil industry uh, and ripple far up the global palm oil supply chain. Do you think so? Uh, 
Okay, here are some of the things that they're documenting. The documented violations include seizure of community lands without consent, involuntary displacement, meaning kicking people out of their homes to plant palm trees, not to mention all the other earthlings getting kicked out of their home, denial of fundamental environmental rights, violence against displaced indigenous peoples, of course, harassment, criminalization, and even killing those trying to defend their lands and forests. Yes. The problems have persisted for decades due to ineffective and sometimes lack of due diligence by buyers and financiers, can you say, the banks are behind it all, along the global supply chain. So now we're going to go look at tin, offshore tin mining in Indonesia. I think I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago. All right, you go for it. Hundreds of Indonesian fishermen have seized a dredging vessel from state-owned PT Taima in a protest against offshore tin mining in what they say is their fishing zone. All right, we have the planet eaters going up against the planet nibblers. Tin mining is now the biggest industry in Banga Baitlung, which accounts for 90% of the tin produced in Indonesia, with the metal winding up in items like Apple's iPhone, among others. Yes, mining in Indonesia, both onshore and offshore, has resulted in extensive forest degradation and deforestation, been associated with worker fatalities and child labor, and has been tainted with corruption. So every time you flip on your iPhone, you can think of that. Alright, what is the latest news out of Sub-Saharan Africa? For Africa's great apes, even the best case climate change scenario will decimate habitat. Africa's great apes stand to lose up to 94% of their current suitable habitat by 2050 if humanity makes no effort to slow greenhouse gas emissions, a new study warns. Even under the best case scenario in which global warming can be slowed, gorillas, chimpanzees, and bonobos would still lose 85% of their range. The apes' habitat is already under pressure from human encroachment, clearing of wild areas, and climate change impacts that are rendering existing habitats no longer sub uh, suitable. Uh, so anyway, uh, I, I'm glad they, they mentioned that uh, because I would reword the first sentence of this. Africa's great apes stand to lose 100% of their current suitable habitat by 2040 if humanity makes no effort to slow their breeding, a new study at Collapse Chronicles warns, uh, with no help from climate change, okay? No, if, if, if climate change were nowhere in the picture, too many humans in Sub-Saharan Africa, just the, these, these humans there that do not produce uh, very much carbon emissions with a very small 
carbon footprint, the environmental footprint, the ecological footprint of the number of humans being born in Sub-Saharan Africa with no help from the rest of the world will destroy 100% of great, great ape habitat and every great ape will end up in the stew pot. Every great ape, every single individual great ape in Sub-Saharan Africa will be extinct, at least in the wild, certainly by 2050, and my guess is by 2040. You heard it here at Collapse Chronicles. You did not hear it on Manga Bay. All right. We just heard how uh, smartphones are uh, deforesting the planet. Armed with smartphones, Amazon communities boost fight against deforestation. There you go. I absolutely love it. It's basically, you know, using a chainsaw to battle deforestation. Uh, okay, here's a long story uh, about, uh, you know, the, this whole issue of biomass. Basically burning down, uh, you know, burning down forest to uh, supposedly lower carbon emissions. This is one more time when people do not understand the difference between the carbon footprint and the ecological footprint. That this really is not... Okay, I am wearing a pair of... What jeans are these? I think they're Levi. I will assume I am wearing Levi's jeans. All right, guys. For those of you who do not understand the difference, uh, let's say there are nine brands of blue jeans, Levi's being one of them. Okay, so all Levi's are blue jeans, but all blue jeans are not Levi's. There are still, if you took Levi's, if, if Levi Strauss went out of business, there would still be eight brands of Levi's. I don't know if that helped at all. Anyway, back to biomass. A major political and environmental dispute is heating up as the forest industry and governments promote forest biomass, otherwise known as cutting down trees, turning them into wood pellets, and burning them to make electricity. They claim the science shows biomass to be sustainable with the energy produced resulting in zero emissions, which says nothing about the denuded uh, wasteland left behind where every single species of our fellow earthling dependent on the forest that was burned down. So they're claiming this sustainable energy source that the the savings which is which is bullshit anyway uh, in carbon emissions outweighs just just the flat out destruction of the habitat caused to create uh, this bullshit form of sustainable in, uh, industry um, forest advocates and many researchers sit squarely on the other side of the argument proving that Forest biomass is destructive to forest and biodiversity, you know, depending on the forest, is dirtier than coal and destabilizing for the climate. Moreover, they claim the carbon neutrality claim is an error that will in fact greatly increase carbon emissions. Yes. Uh, anyway, you can go on Manga Bay for that full story. Uh, anybody still, you know, like Bill McKibben, uh, anyone who saw Planet of the Humans, you know Bill McKibben. 
that that little uh, spineless little hypocrite one of the biggest cheerleaders of forest biomass saving the planet Bill McKibben uh, how many thousands of acres of Vermont's forest have been flattened and obliterated off the face of this planet while Bill McKibben uh, cheering on biomass don't get me going all right we now have Australians setting up mines in Greenland good lord uh, the advancement of a huge rare earths and uranium mining project in Greenland uh, sparked a snap election that saw a Green Party elected and a new government form that is opposed to the mine. Uh, so this is the Vengeveld project. It is a team effort between an Australian mining company with a Chinese partner would exploit one of the world's largest deposits of rare earth metals and uranium uh, and increase Greenland's greenhouse gas emissions by 45%. Um, good luck on killing that. Uh, okay. Again, guys, we have, we have reached yet another headline that we never could have figured out ourselves without Rhett Butler explaining to it this to us. Well, the storm is blowing. Sorry about the wind on the uh, microphone. Did you realize, I mean, again, this is why we depend on Rhett Butler. Did you realize that soy and cattle team up to drive deforestation in South America? Hmm. Between 2000 and 2019, the production of soybeans in South America has doubled, now covering an area larger than the state of California. Good Lord. Soybean farms are ticked typically planted, you know, in worn out old cattle pastures. And as the soy farms encroach, the cattle pastures are forced into new frontiers, driving deforestation and fires. Yes. Um, uh, Okay, so we're talking about dugong, which are manatees, Ma looking at manatee deaths in Sri Lanka lend urgency to calls for stronger protection. Uh, recent reports of dead manatees washing up in Sri Lanka have shown a spotlight on stalled efforts to conserve the increasingly rare and threatened sea mammals. So in Sri Lanka, the main threats to manatees are hunting for their meat, accidental and deliberate killing by blast fishing, and entanglement in fishing nets. Um, the dugong, or the manatee, is being declared critically endangered for the first time and you don't have to go to Sri Lanka what was I reading in Florida right here in Florida was it 621 or or was it 821 manatees washing up dead in Florida this year more manatees have died in Florida that this is like a record I think there's like, I think there's like 3,000 manatees left on the planet and what, 20 to 25% of them washed up dead 
uh, in the first half of 2021. And with this damn uh, red tide going on down there in Tampa Bay, good Lord, you can expect that number to skyrocket. All right, more fight between biofuels over oils. Uh, Indonesia bets on biofuels, meaning palm oil, over oil, but electric vehicles could render both moot. Yes, anyway, won't get into that. Uh, more stories on human-elephant conflicts. Uh, anyway, guys, I could go on and on and on with this. Uh, I'm skipping over a lot of them. I'm, a, I'm maybe two-thirds of the way through. Uh, Here's one uh, talking about these damn hydroelectric dams. Yes. Uh, gee, Amazon deforestation rising in June. Mm, do you think so? Deforestation in the Brazilian Amazon continued on an upward trajectory, trajectory in June. Blah, blah, blah. So, 311 central parks hitting the uh, dirt. Uh, you will not believe this one. Did you realize that environmental defenders in Ecuador are not safe. Uh, imagine that. Uh, the report concludes that not only has uh, the Ecuadorian state failed to protect rights defenders, but it also has been, in fact, directly responsible for some of the abuses. Yes. Three environmental rights defenders have been murdered. Oh, Lord. Okay, it is technical glitches holding up enforcement of rulings in Indonesian fire and haze cases. Yes, there's all technical glitches. Uh, anyway, guys, good God, we're going to do one more. We're going to finish up. Uh, let's finish up. I could go on uh, forever here, but we're going to do one more. Let's go up to the Arctic to wrap up the uh, midsummer. Manga Bay Roundup. <clears throat> As Arctic melt sets early July record, hard times lie ahead for ice. Well, that was a bad choice of words. I would say soft times lie ahead for ice, not hard times. Anyway, Arctic sea ice fell to its lowest extent on record for this time of year on July 5th, even though the spring had so far been relatively cool and stormy. Conditions that in the past would have protected the ice. Three new studies help explain why. <clears throat> One found that increasing air temperatures and intrusion of warm water from the North Atlantic into the Barents and Kara Seas a climate change driven process known as Atlantification are now overpowering the ice's ability to regrow in winter. A second study 
found that sea ice in coastal areas may be thinning at up to twice the pace as previously thought. Yes, in three coastal areas, you know, look, uh, in three coastal seas, the Laptev, Kara, and Chukchi, the rate of coastal sea ice decline increased by 70%. 98% and 110% in the Chukchi, respectively, when compared to earlier models. And a third study found accelerated sea ice loss in the Waddell Sea, or I think that was Waddell Sea, pointing to a possible assault by global warming on the Arctic's last ice area, a last bastion of multi-year sea ice, which stretches from Greenland along the Canadian Arctic archipelago. Combined, this research shows Arctic ice may be in worse trouble than we thought. Hmm, Arctic ice may be in worse trouble than we thought. Indonesian birds may be in worse trouble than we thought. Manatees may be in worse trouble than we thought. Great apes in Africa may be in worse trouble than we thought. The Amazon rainforest uh, conversion uh, from sink to source is a hell of a lot worse than we thought. Uh, anyway, I could go on with the list of worse than previously thought. But I've got to wrap this up because I actually have a bunch of hip campers. We're finally going to uh, have pretty much a full hip camp this week in the pouring down rain and I have to go buy uh, a bunch of toilet paper, paper towels, the usual. Get out there and enjoy your toilet paper and paper towels while you still can. Bye, guys.